Number 83, find the time after T0 when the instantaneous voltage of 160, excuse me, hertz of alternating current reaches the following values, uh, the initial voltage divided by two. Um, so here's our formula that we're gonna have to use. It's basically talking about the instantaneous voltage is equal to the initial voltage multiplied by the sine of two pi times the frequency multiplied by that in time over which this thing is being operated. So what we need to do basically for letter A is we have to realize that what they're giving us here is V. So in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute V O or V naught, right? V sub O over two in for V. So it's going to look like this. I like to put parentheses around this because it looks confusing to me without them. So what I notice here is that multi, you know, uh, algebraically I can cancel those V O's, right? And this would be then one half, and that's now equal to then sine of two pi multiplied by the frequency times time. Now, what are we solving for? We're finding the time. So you're looking for this, boom. How do we find that? Well, you gotta get rid of the sine function. In order to get rid of the sine function on the right-hand side, you gotta do the inverse sine of both sides. So sine minus one, so the inverse sine of one half, that will equal then inverse sine of sine two pi Ft. Now notice, the signs just go by my C, they cancel, that's it. All right, that's all it is. And then what you need to now do is you have to take then the inverse sign of one half. Now, what you, what you wanna do here is you have to leave this in terms of uh, radians this time. So when you go to your mode in your calculator, make sure you're in radians, okay? There's a math function that's going to use radians. So please, because and why, how do we know that it's gonna use radians? because you're talking about pi in here. Anytime you see pi in this equation, you're going to do your, your uh, trigonometric functions are gonna be in terms of radians. So please change it. So inverse sine of point, uh, one, one half or 0.5, it doesn't really matter. It's going to equal now 0.5236. 5, 2, 3, 6 radians. And then this is equal to now 2 pi Ft. Now notice, if I want to solve this for time, just divide out the 2 pi F. Right? 2 pi F. 2 pi F. Remember, pi is a number. It's 3.14, blah, 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 blah. And then you're going to say, well, what's F? Well, they told you. The frequency. There it is, 60 hertz up at the top. And that's in the right units. That's per second or cycles per second. So literally, all we got to now do is just plug everything on in. So the time here, we're gonna realize, the time, I wrote frequency, but the time is gonna be simply 0.5236 all divided by two pi multiplied by 60 hertz. So let's do it. Two times pi multiplied by 60, that's all in the bottom. So this works out to be about uh, 1.39 times 10 to the one minus three seconds. You want that in milliseconds? Just divide it by a thousand. Easy enough. Letter B. So we're going to do the same thing now for letter B, but just now it's VO. So what we're going to do, we're going to do this quickly, okay? So for letter B, it's going to be the same equation, but there's not going to be a two down here. So these would both cancel. Meanwhile, you would be left with now one equals sine of two pi ft. Take the inverse sine of both sides, and you're gonna realize that this is gonna be equal to the sine minus one of one. You can plug that into the calculator, okay? It's gonna be equal to two pi ft. Simply divide this piece on out again, right? It's no different than what we just did. So boom, there it goes. There's your time. And now just substitute, instead of having f there, just substitute in the 60. And that's all you gotta to do to plug it into your calculator. You see how quick that is now? So inverse sine of one, divided then by parentheses 2 pi times 60. Close those parentheses. And here we're gonna get a value of about 4.17, 4.17. And I guess I should probably be doing two sig figs, but eh, who cares, right? Who cares? So minus three, except for your professor when he or she takes off 17 points for one problem. Seconds. Then when you get out there in the world and they actually do calculus, nobody cares. Nobody cares about sick figs. So um, anyway, all right. 
All right, so let's take a look at letter C. So now letter C is a little tricky, and the reason why is uh, for the following particular uh, reason. So if you plug it, if we do the same exact thing, right, we're gonna take this equation, we plug in zero. So I'm gonna copy it, plug in zero, and we solve this now. We're gonna get a value of zero. Why? The inverse sine of zero is zero. So it just comes out to zero on the top. This on the bottom, doesn't matter what the heck it comes out to, zero divided by any number is gonna be zero, as long as the denominator is not zero, which it is not. So the answer could have been t equals zero, seconds, but, it says find the time after t equals zero. Ah, darn it, all right? So that is an answer, but it ain't gonna work, all right? Obviously, what's the instantaneous voltage at time zero when it didn't even draw any current? Well, it's zero, right? There's no voltage being applied, all right? So remember that we're dealing with a sine curve. So, oh boy, right? So remember, sine looks like this, okay? Boom, 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 okay? So there's a couple of times at which this will happen. So, it, you know, finding the time, I guess, immediately after. So the x-axis represents time, okay, time, and the y-axis is going to represent the voltage, all right? So here, what we realize is that the voltage at time zero is zero. That's what we just found, all right? And when we now take a look downstream, there's also a time right here, okay? And there's a time right here and it would keep going, right? I mean, so what I wanna do is I wanna figure out this time. Now, in order to figure out that particular time at that location, I have to realize one thing, right? What do I have to realize? I have to realize how many now oscillations there are or in other words, when does the sine curve come back to zero? If you remember back to, you know, sine curves, I guess. Well, it happens in a couple of spots, right? It happens at zero, and then it happens at pi, and then it happens at two pi again, and we're gonna keep going, alternating that pattern. So now what we need to realize is the calculator, when we plug this in, it spits out a value of zero, but that's not the only value it can obtain. The value of zero is possible, the value of pi is possible, the value of two pi is possible, et cetera. Right, we would keep going, three pi, four pi, five pi. So we wanna find basically the first time, essentially. So the time at pi. So what we need to do then is, this is where the calculator won't really give us too much guidance, is we have to realize that this answer will get spit out of the calculator at zero. But that's not the point at which we want to be solving for our time. We want to find it at pi. So in other words, what you have to realize is that this term is going to work out to be just pi, not zero, because when you calculate the inverse sine of zero, you found it to be at a time of zero. But it also can happen at a time of pi. It could also happen at a time of two pi. The calculator is not going to tell you that. All right? So we have to do a little thinking. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take pi now and then divide it by two pi, two pi. Notice how the pi's would cancel anyway, right? So it's basically just one divided then by two times the frequency, hmm. or AK 120. And that works out to now be 8.33 times 10 to the minus three seconds. And there you go. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care.